Welcome to Almost Here, Round the Corner of Future Technology Podcasts with Richard Jacobs. Future technologies poised to transform our lives for better or worse are the focus of this podcast. Almost Here means these technologies are now here and starting to be used. We're just around the corner from Bitcoin to artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain, virtual reality, and more. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Future Tech Podcast. I'm your host, Juliette Lamar, and joining us today is Shadan Guran. He is the CEO and President at Global Blockchain Technologies Corporation. Welcome, Shadan. How are you? Very good. Thanks for having me, Juliette. So, Shadan, why don't you go ahead and give us a little insight into what Global Blockchain Technologies Corp. does? Well, Global Blockchain is uh, a incubator of startups in the blockchain space. We, we, we like to incubate projects specifically uh, that, that, that have a token economy aspect to them as well. And we, we, we deal with solutions both for the enterprise and for, you know, internet uh, scale projects, consumer facing projects. Very cool. So I guess how many, how many of these new and up and coming companies are you, are you seeing that you're excited about? Well, currently we're we're uh, incubating uh, four companies that are that are almost ready to be uh, unveiled. We 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 have one in the peer-to-peer storage space, so you can think of it as an Airbnb for storage. We have a uh, solution for the video game industry with uh, 12 uh, video game related companies on board, who together have a uh, combined user group, uh, user base, I should say, of, of 400 million users. And uh, they'll they'll be accepting this token within their games for purchasing in-game assets, and uh, for the, it'll actually be rewarded to players who who uh, achieve certain uh, goals and and uh, you know, win properly. So that that's an exciting one. And then we we're working on a trade finance solution with uh, some of the world's major ports in partnership and and uh, government bodies. And uh, those are those are some of the projects we're working on right now. That's fantastic! Super exciting. Um, you know, these four. I'm sure you had to sort through many, many other projects to arrive at these four that you want to start incubating. You know, what are, what from your your perspective makes makes a company that you that you're going to get behind and believe in, and will eventually succeed? Well, I I think uh, where really uh, virtual currencies, even beyond blockchains, you know, where where they really shine is in transforming social networks into markets. And by social networks, I don't mean just Facebook, although that is definitely one of them, but I mean any group of interacting users who, who, who form a network. Right now, you have a lot of currencies that are, that are kind of baseless and, and really you know, just speculative tools for gamblers, essentially. But when, when these tools actually represent something within a network of users, that token can't be forked, it can't be you know, recreate it because you can't really recreate the user base. So that's that's why a project like our, uh, you know, uh, gaming gaming token is, I think, really important. Digital assets like that will survive beyond any bubble. They will get much bigger and, and they will be required to, you know, run and control uh, services on the Internet because it's, it's just getting out of hand. And, and you, you need a tool like a currency to really enable these, these networks to their maximum potential. So, you know, that the all the projects that, that we're focused on are, are things of that nature. So, you know, beyond this, we're also doing a project where we're looking at amazing brands with amazing revenue streams who, who want to securitize part of their revenue stream and sell it as, as a token, essentially. And what what that represents is, is, is another aspect of blockchains, which which means that it that it can grab markets, make them very global, make the world a much smaller place, and make it a lot easier to trade and transact just as easily as, as it is to send an email, essentially. And and that's going to have profound effects and impacts on the capital markets. It's it's going to make them a lot more efficient, a lot more available. So, you know, if, if you're an engineer in Shenzhen making 120000 a year, you're, you're going to have all of North America open to you to invest in via these technologies. You don't have to worry about different currencies. You don't have to worry about coming over here and opening up a brokerage account. Uh, you don't have to worry about working with specific transfer agents and clearing houses. It's it's all automated and part of the system essentially. And um, they they don't have to be bearer instruments. They they, they they can be 
you know, uh, as it is today as far as KYC, AML, know your customer and anti-money launch. So it, it's a really exciting time. How did you get involved in working in this space and essentially becoming involved with global blockchain? I've, I've been in the tech space for a long time, for, for more than two decades now. And uh, I, I had a software engineering company. One of my developers was a miner. This was around uh, 2009, 2010. And I, I myself had seen uh, the original uh, white paper from, from Satoshi and, and his original posts on uh, the P2P Foundation website. I, I, I thought it was an interesting idea. I, I didn't think it was going to work as a currency, but I, but I certainly thought the technology was very interesting. And uh, my, my, the, the developer that was working for me, was, who was mining, gave me a bunch of tokens. Back then, they were worth around, you know, somewhere between two and five cents, actually. And, uh, you know, before I, I, I knew it, not much longer, they'd, they'd gone up to $300 a token. And, you know, that really uh, got me excited in the space. And uh, I've, I've been involved with it since, really. I love hearing people's stories of how they got involved because everyone has this unique unique way, the unique way they caught the, the, the blockchain bug or the Bitcoin bug. So it's always nice to hear your, your yeah. starting stories. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, to 2000, late 2011, I, I decided to start a project in this space, which was uh, a decentralized DNS for type solution. And that, that didn't quite work out. I mean, you know, things, I, I started getting more involved in just being an investor in the space, an uh, angel investor. And, um, but that's, that's, that's really the first project that I, that I myself attempted to work on. And I, I, I definitely saw a solution there potentially. For, for you know that these technologies could really help with you know and you've been in the, you've been in this industry now for for a hot minute where where are some of the biggest changes that that you've seen that you think are moving it forward into a you know a positive direction where more and more people can can grow with it well the, the technology is getting a lot better a lot of layer two technologies are coming into play and uh, I think having efficiency and scalability of, of these solutions is of utmost importance and and we are seeing some inroads there. I think we're very early on in the game. I, I think, you know, a few years ago, everybody said this was like 1992. I, I don't think we've really even approached 1992 yet. And uh, I, I, I really think that, you know, soon these things will take scale. I, I, I don't think human ingenuity should, should ever be discounted. And, and we, you know, pe people were saying the same things about modems. They're like, well, this, this thing will never scale. The, this idea of consumer grade internet will never scale because it's, it's going to be too expensive. The, the, it'll never be fast enough, and, and and we saw where we went from, you know, uh, the the modems of 19, you know, 92 to, to what we have today in everybody's house. And I think the same thing is going to happen really with blockchains. They're they're going to scale out. I think I think the solutions they they solve are, are are pretty obvious and straightforward. A lot of solutions that that people you know purport blockchains will help with, I I don't agree with. So you know. Um, Real estate provenance, uh, e-health, these types of things. I, I I really think they're they're overblown, and I'm 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 very not I'm not very keen on on solutions there. What I am keen about is is uh, you know decentralized autonomous markets and taking networks that that really weren't uh, monetizable before and making them into monetizable uh, networks and markets, right? Backed by an asset, and I think I think that's where they will really shine. So you know. In, in just something like Facebook, for example, or media, um, attention is, is becoming a valuable resource. There's so much content out there. Just having somebody give some focus and attention to it is something of value. So uh, as they call it, the attention economy is something that interests me a lot. I think, I think there's a real potential for, for virtual currencies and blockchains to play a role there. Obviously, in, in the video game and virtual reality, uh, world, I, 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 I think, you know, tokens are going to become, uh, you know, completely central to it, actually. Um, but I think today, again, going back to the, the main issue is scalability, and uh, we're getting that. And I, we're, we're making progress there considerably. So jumping back over to global blockchain, for, for the companies that you were incubating, for your in-house incubation, you know, what are some of the very unique resources that you're providing these companies and maybe go into a little bit of detail as to why those are are unique and, and helpful what what unique uh, resources are, are are we providing these companies well we we mm -hmm. we, uh, we we provide you know full technical resources obviously the financial backing we uh, we you know 
we're not really looking for, for, for people who understand blockchains. We're, we're, we're looking for domain experts who really understand an industry and have, have a good intuition of how these technologies can, can change it for the better. So that's, that's, that's our main focus, and we pretty much can provide everything else that's required to, to make these projects work. Out of all the projects that I've mentioned, they're actually all, uh, you know, in-house concoctions at this point. We, we, we haven't really, you know, we, 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 we've gone through a lot of people who have contacted us for various ideas, but so far the ones that we've incubated are stuff that we've started in-house, and we've built teams around and, and are, you know, uh, really forming and placing out there. So like, like the video game one again, we, we, we started working with, with one uh, gaming company who's a substantial uh, social network in the gaming space, and it's expanded to 12 different parties, and it's, it's become kind of a consortium. Well, it, it, it is a consortium, and, and they're now taking this token as legal tender. That, that project is called Game Galaxy. Uh, for, for the peer-to-peer -peer storage, Initially, we, we, we actually approached uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise and worked with them on some levels. For example, they, they, they opened up their uh, uh, customer uh, list to us and, and helped us uh, arrange a proof of concept with, with their customers on this concept of selling your excess capacity, your storage capacity, to, to others, whether it's within the department, I mean, enterprise, or between enterprises. So, you know, if, if you're in an enterprise right now, each department is essentially a autonomous organization onto itself. So if, if you as an as a department have, you know, been allocated a certain number of storage and compute power and another department wants it, it's really uh, not, not a straightforward process of, of getting that. You have to go through all the bean counters in the company, get many layers of permissions, bureaucracy and whatnot, and, and an internal currency is kind of allocated for, you know, spending and, and all of that. Well, what blockchains can do is completely automate this pro process inside the enterprise, greatly reduce costs while maintaining security, because again, various departments don't want their information shared with each other. Um, and, and this greatly, greatly reduces costs in the enterprise, so much so that, that now uh, it actually becomes a threat to a company like, like Amazon with their AWS offering or Microsoft with their Azure offering. That's just inside the enterprise. Now, if you think about the fact that you know, outside of the enterprise, various enterprises can sell and buy excess capacity from each other while being guaranteed security and privacy in a mathematical fashion and, and uptime. Um, it's massive. It, it, it turns the cloud into a real cloud and not so much of a central point as it is today. It, it becomes a marketplace for clouds, essentially. And uh, that's, that's why I, I gave the Airbnb analogy, because it's, it's the same idea, essentially. And blockchains really help with solutions like that, especially solutions where no party will accept a middleman, right? I mean, a lot of companies today, major incumbents are, are now playing catch up to Microsoft and, and Amazon in offering these services. Now, they're, they're not going to want it replaced by another organization. They're, they're, they're going to want, you know, um, they're, they're going to want um, the playing field to be level, essentially. And I think, I think that's what these kind of technologies can really bring you. Absolutely. There's so much potential for growth in, in an overwhelmingly di differing amount of, of industry with this technology. And you can yeah. really kind of choose your own adventure with it. Yeah. So, Absolutely. you know, walk, walk us through, I guess, a user experience. You said a lot of your, your incubated companies are in-house currently. You know, walk us through uh, if, if someone was coming to you looking for partnership, investment, legal advice for their, for their startup. What would be the best way to contact you about it, and what would you like them to have available for you to look over? Yeah, I think I think a bad way to to contact us is to you know drop an email uh, saying you know I I want to do with something with blockchains. Can you tell me what you guys offer as as a as a service? Because we're we're not really a service provider in that sense, and and we get so many of these requests, we can't really respond to everybody on that level. I think I think the best way for someone to approach us is to actually give us, you know, a, a really good five minute elevator pitch, a really nice uh, slide deck, preferably an introduction from somebody that we already know, and something that really clearly shows the problem they're trying to solve and, and how these technologies, to their understanding, can, can really uh, aid that problem and, and, you know, what their qualifications and, and background with respect to that space really is. 
I think that's that's probably a, a much better way to get our attention. And what are some of the the biggest mistakes that you see over and over again that you'd want to share with uh, with potential people who are having these companies and things that they could avoid? Well, I think I think everybody thinks that the, the blockchains are some sort of panacea, of, you know, for uh, solution for 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 everything, and that's that's not the case. I mean, I have people that, that that contact me saying that they, you know, just recently I I got a slide deck about some renewable fertilizer plant who who wanted to do an ICO. I'm like, well, you know, okay, you want to do a crowdfunding campaign, you know, uh, maybe you know, look at some of the equity crowdfunding laws or, you know what other means of raising money, but that really doesn't have anything to do with blockchains and, and this space won't really help you with that. So I think, I think that's really key is, is, is to really understand how decentralization can aid a project and if it really makes sense. Uh, it, it, it's not a solution for everything and, and it is a solution for many things though. And, and you, know, you, 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 you have to give, give a good problem to solve in, in, in order to really uh, go somewhere in this space. Just, just, just like the, you know, dot-com bubble essentially was the same thing. You had everybody throwing an idea out saying how, how the internet would solve it, and only those that really made sense stuck around. Absolutely. You know, I was going to say, so you're, you're also seeing the same thing with the IoT space where everything is becoming internet enabled. In that sense, that's a little bit different than blockchains, though, because often when you even, you know, Internet may enable a toothbrush. It might seem silly, but then you do find solutions for that. That's not the case with blockchains, though. They 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 really do solve certain problems. Then, if if you really understand what they're about, you 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 know where they make sense and where they don't. Well, that that definitely narrows it down. Um, what is the best place for people to find out more about global blockchain, connect with you, and and get, start getting involved? I think uh, just going to our website, globalblockchain.io, is 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 a good start. Uh, we we are a public company and we're, we're listed on the Canadian Stock Exchange and Frankfurt as well. And and in the states, we also trade uh, over the counter, of course. And um, you know, the best place is to go there. Uh, we we have a newsletter you can sign up to, and uh, there's more information on what we offer. We're we're looking for you know people who are again interested in in pushing solutions in this space so if anybody has any ideas very happy to to, to hear them and they, they can just email info at globalblockchain.io as well fantastic shadan thank you so much for joining us here today on future tech podcast and and sharing your your insider information about incubating these these companies that are going to change our future great well thanks again for having me my pleasure. That is Goran. He is the CEO and president at Global Blockchain Technologies Corp. Thank you all so much for tuning in. This has been Juliet Lamar with Feature Tech Podcast. You have been listening to Almost Here, Around the Corner Future Technology Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Subscribe to this podcast, both to review to discover more future technologies that are poised to transform our lives for better or worse, such as Bitcoin, artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain, virtual reality, and more.